Frankie Kong, Donkey Kong, and Donkey Kong Jr.'s status and relationship is a very confusing aspect of the Mario timeline, which isn't saying much from what I've come to realize. These particular Kongs served as some of Mario's oldest enemies and have since cemented their place in the current state of the franchise. Well, most of them at least. Between Nintendo's constant changes over the years and various fan interpretations, it's become hard to truly understand these three and how they all can coexist in the current Mario timeline, if they even can. Is Cranky Kong really a grandfather? Is Donkey Kong Donkey Kong Jr.'s son? Hell, is Donkey Kong Jr. Donkey Kong himself or what? Well, after a lot of thinking, I may have figured out the truth about these three, but be warned, my answer may require you to look at Mario in a way you've never expected. But before we get to that, let's first look at the history of the Kongs' relationships and how they stand now. Cranky Kong is the first Kong we ever see in the franchise, making his debut in 1981's Donkey Kong. Cranky Kong? But that's Donkey Kong! <laughs> you were wrong! Yes, this is Cranky Kong, while he was still Donkey Kong. Cranky went by Donkey Kong throughout the original arcade trilogy up until the release of Donkey Kong Country, in which he retired and relinquished his name to his grandson and became Cranky Kong. Though weirdly enough, he never officially called DK his grandson or revealed he was the original Donkey Kong until Donkey Kong Country 2, where he states he was kidnapping Pauline seven days a week. So where did this information come before this? Well, before the release of Donkey Kong Country, Nintendo Power released a promotional VHS exclusive to its subscribers called Donkey Kong Country Exposed. In it, Cranky is called DK's dad or grandfather. We got Cranky. Cranky's the star of the original uh, Donkey Kong game. Still alive, Your is he? Dad or grandfather played that game. Uh. What? So the basis of his relationship was established here and hasn't changed much since, besides Nintendo flip-flopping between the terms he's referred to by whom. Donkey Kong, the current Donkey Kong we all know and love, made his debut in Donkey Kong Country, the ground-pounding primate, the king of the Kongs, the toy-loving ex-Pauline kidnapping, enemy of Kremlins, friend-slash-rival to Mario, the king of swing, a fine bloke, etc. As I said earlier, DK was established as the son-slash-grandson to Cranky, and has remained that way since, though his relationship with DK Jr. is very unclear. The main consensus now is that he's Donkey Kong Jr.'s son, while some might say he is DK Jr. following a name change from inheriting the title Donkey Kong. This was stated in a 1999 online Q&A by Leia Loveday, one of Rare's video game designers and one of the story writers for DKC at the time. Surprisingly enough, for how uncommon the latter interpretation is, the information revolving around it contradicts just as much, but we'll get to that later. Then there's Donkey Kong Jr. himself. First appearing in Donkey Kong Jr., of course, he's the main character attempting to rescue his father, Donkey Kong, Cranky Kong, from Mario after capturing him as revenge for the events of the first game. After that, he stars in a spin-off Donkey Kong Jr. math Yuck. and plays a minor role in Donkey Kong for the Game Boy, helping his father fight Mario as they escape with Pauline. Following this, he was a playable character in the early Tennis and Kart spin-offs, but as of late, he has since been relegated to being a cameo. When it comes to his relationship with DK, no information revolving around it was ever in the games. The only official confirmation we've received on his place in the lineage is from the Playing With Superpower Nintendo Super NES Classics book licensed by Nintendo in 2017. This book states that DK Jr. is the father of the current DK, however, it also contradicts itself in another section, stating that the current DK is a grown-up Donkey Kong Jr. The publisher Prima Games have commented on the contradiction, claiming the latter was a metaphor about the redesign of the character for Donkey Kong Country, with the former being the explanation of their in-game relationships. While this may seem conclusive, this cannot be used as a deciding factor, given this book wasn't written by Nintendo or an authority of theirs, so this is simply the author's interpretation of this information, though I wouldn't doubt someone for coming to that conclusion, especially when you consider that this book only covers the SNES era, predating the new information that would later cause confusion. 
Now I know I haven't mentioned every statement or source about each Kong's place, trust me when I say there's a reason for that. I'm just establishing a basis for where they stand now. But with what we have now, that begs the question, how does all of this fit in the Mario timeline? If Cranky Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. are DK's grandfather and father respectively, Donkey Kong's age makes no sense compared to Mario's. If Cranky Kong is DK's father, then his age still doesn't make sense compared to Mario or his design in DKC and Mario vs Donkey Kong unless he underwent a massive growth spurt, but then where's DK Jr? How can all three of them coexist? Well there is one interpretation in which they can. Before we get to that though, we first need to talk about a variation of Donkey Kong and the game he's from that I've ignored up until this point. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk about baby Donkey Kong. Baby DK was first introduced in Yoshi's Island DS. The story of the game revolves around Bowser, Kamek, and the Toadies. Toadies meaning underlings, they're magic Koopas with fly guy propellers, not their own species. Kidnapping children from around the world and attempt to find the seven star children children born with an extraordinary amount of power, those seven being Mario, Luigi, Peach, Wario, Bowser himself, a Yoshi born after the events of the game, and Donkey Kong. Oh great, as if this wasn't confusing enough, how the hell does this work? How can baby DK be relative in age to Mario if he's supposed to be the grandson of Cranky and the son of Donkey Kong Jr? See, this is where that interpretation comes in. There are some people that actually believe that Baby DK is Cranky Kong, to which I have to say, ARE YOU FUCKING HIGH?! How do people actually believe this? If Cranky Kong and DK Jr. are still in the mix, that still makes no sense. DK Jr.'s age makes no sense. If Mario is stated to be 24 to 25 years old by Miyamoto himself, then how old would the current Donkey Kong be? What, like five or six? Was DK Jr. late in girder back then and telling the ladies, hey, don't worry, I'm due for a growth spurt. And don't you look at me like that. I know what he looked like on the cabinet art, but he was made to look younger in the Game Boy game. His look is inconsistent across the games he's in. I don't know who he's shacked up with, but she might be due for a case. Not even that, but given how old Cranky Kong is now, wouldn't that make the life expectancy of a Kong about 30 years given the state he and his dead wife are in, and he's supposed to be one of the seven star children? I can see why Bowser went to the past to pull this off. This geriatric gorilla is near his deathbed and the others are too strong. Wouldn't it make more sense if they were similar in age seeing how they were all born within a one to two year time span? And don't any of you dare say, well Nintendo confirmed that Bowser is 34. Shut the fuck up, I don't give a damn about what they said in an unlisted how to create a Nintendo account video. I swear people who actually believe this have to be beta orbiting around the Mario community are downright stupid or have never played a Yoshi's Island game. But I will take that birth month and day for both him and Junior, thank you. And then there's the other interpretation, that baby DK is still cranky, but DK Junior is the current Donkey Kong. To which I have to say, first off, Come on now dawg, come on man. Do I have to be that guy for a moment? Because these two look like the inverse of each other. Not only that, but none of the wikis even acknowledge this. Not that that's important. I just wanted to point that out. They all say that baby DK is Donkey Kong without any mention of the others and no Nintendo narrative mentions baby DK in the mix. So where did these thoughts come from? people doing anything and everything they can to make it make sense to them, even if they have to drown in delusion to get there. And to that, I'm canceling any and all of your Nintendo subscriptions and no, you will not be getting any form of deposit back. Take your nonsense out of here. With that covered, we've established that no matter how you twist it, there is simply no way Cranky Kong, Donkey Kong, and Donkey Kong Jr. can all coexist without major contradictions, contrivances, or delusional fantasies. The Mario timeline cannot support this notion despite what Nintendo, programmers, or writers have to say. 
So how does this work? How can this work? Well, you're going to want to sit down for this. The answer is quite simple. Donkey Kong Jr. no longer exists. In fact, you could say he never did. There's something I've come to realize and something you need to understand when it comes to the Mario timeline the way it is now. You need to understand that retcons exist and that they are present both in and out of universe. But what do I mean by that? Well, first let's look at the reason why Donkey Kong Jr. exists. During Donkey Kong's development back in 1981, Shigeru Miyamoto and his team developed a variety of ideas and level concepts that didn't make it into the game due to various restraints. They eventually fleshed out these ideas enough to the point where the team suggested making another game. At the time, Nintendo was looking to make another Donkey Kong game and the stars aligned. Miyamoto originally wanted the new game to star Donkey Kong, but this wasn't possible due to his size. Instead, they decided to make a smaller Donkey Kong who would be the son of Donkey Kong to be playable in place of Mario, but they also wanted a big Donkey Kong to still be on top of the screen. That's when they developed the game's plot, to have Mario kidnap DK following the events of the first game. So Donkey Kong Jr. was only created to replace Donkey Kong, something that the current DK also did by directly inheriting his name. Okay, besides that, what purpose did he serve in general when he was still relevant? Simple, the exact same purpose he was created for, serving as a playable character when no one else was available. With his son's rising popularity and an expanded cast, DK Jr. simply had no reason to appear anymore. Nintendo made this pretty clear with his dwindling number of appearances, relegating him to an occasional cameo. But don't think fulfilling Daddy Miyamoto's purpose for him is the only reason he disappeared. You can also blame the star of the show himself, Mario. Let's think about it for a second. Mario back then was a bit different compared to the Mario we know now. Let's look at the plot for the original Donkey Kong first. Mario sets out to save his girlfriend, Pauline, who had been kidnapped by Donkey Kong. Simple enough. But there is another version of the plot that's made its rounds causing confusion. Back in 2000, an interview with Shigeru Miyamoto on Nintendo's online magazine revealed that in the original story of the game, Donkey Kong was Mario's pet gorilla who had escaped. People took this outdated plot and combined it with their character portrayal in 1984's Donkey Kong Circus for the Game & Watch and created this narrative that's being spread around as fact. Mario was a bad and abusive owner to Donkey Kong, so he lashed out and escaped. While this may not be true, the idea of a villainous Mario did appear in the story to Donkey Kong Jr. As I've established earlier, Donkey Kong Jr. was made to replace DK due to his size. However, they also wanted DK to appear, so Mario was established as the villain to maintain the three character structure akin to its predecessor, the hero, the villain, and the damsel. Let's look into Mario as the villain. Now it would make sense for someone to want revenge if a stranger kidnapped their girl. But the lengths Mario went to are absurd. It would make sense if Mario captured DK following his defeat in the first game, but that's not what happened. Don't let the promotional commercial fool you. Mario actually went out into the jungle to find him and capture him there, retaliated against DK Jr. with various forces and a whip mind you, while he was trying to save his dad and stop an intruder who encroached on their territory. He took DK back to his hideout, filled with traps, and held up shop there until DK Jr. arrived and saved his dad. Now what does all of that sound like to you? That sounds like something Bowser would do. That doesn't sound very Mario-like at all. You don't see him send out to capture Bowser after he's done returning Peach to the castle, no. You don't see him seeking conflict, he tends to react to it. And need I say again, he has a whip. He even has it on the cabinet or Mario, buddy. You can't be running around chasing monkeys with that thing in today's age. It's not a good look for you. You will get dealt with on the spot. This portrayal of Mario really shows how unfocused his character was at the time. You have to remember, this was one of his earliest outings while the basis of his character was still forming. 
it wouldn't make sense for him to have ever done something like this in his life. The events of the game likely never happened, it just wouldn't make sense. So I now ask you, what does removing Donkey Kong Jr. really change in the timeline? With the sports, carts, and party games being non-canon, his only other appearance is Donkey Kong for the Game Boy, in which he's hardly important. He mostly serves as another obstacle by changing the direction of the conveyor belt and throwing poison mushrooms at Shrink Mario. The only major moment he has is when you defeat him in a level calling back to the chain scene in Donkey Kong Jr. His absence would only leave you short of a reference, and after that, nothing. He's gone from the mainstream, hardly leaving a stain. With that, only one question remains. What of the relationship between Donkey Kong and Cranky Kong? Cranky first called DK his grandson throughout Donkey Kong Country. Two. He then calls him his son in Donkey Kong 64. But in 2017, it was stated by Greg Mails, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, from DK64 support team that he was so senile that he couldn't remember their real relationship. A 1999 Q&A claims DK was intended to be Cranky's son. And then there's the movie that made DK Cranky's son. And then there's everything else in between I haven't mentioned. So which is it? To put it simply, I don't know. I think Nintendo is trying to come to a conclusion on the Kong's family affairs by making Donkey Kong Cranky's son in the Super Mario Bros. movie, which they have already confirmed they had heavy involvement in but this may have just been done to make it simple for the sake of the movie, seeing how Donkey Kong Jr. isn't here to complicate things. Another way you can still look at their family as a three generational structure is if you view them the way Miyamoto has described them when it comes to the spin-off games, stating how he views them as actors taking on different roles in different games. Now those are the out of universe answers I can give, but what about in universe? There is one answer I've come up with, but I'm really going to need you to hear me out on this one. From here, the rest of this video is going to be more of a theory using evidence in universe to back it up, so you can disregard this if you want to. That's fine. I'm just trying to provide some kind of in universe explanation as we see it now. So, back on topic, as to whether Cranky Kong is a father or grandfather, the answer is both. You know how? The words grandson and grandfather could have a double meaning in the world of Mario. Grandfather wouldn't just mean the father of one's mother or father, it could also mean older father. Now while this may seem like a massive stretch, there is another example of this type of relationship in the Mario universe. That being Dr. Krygor and Penny Krygor from WarioWare. Dr. Krygor was first introduced in WarioWare Inc. Mega Micro Games for the Game Boy Advance the series first game. Before the release of the game, a Japanese website was made to help promote it. This included profiles for the characters, diary entries, and a lot of background information. I'll cover all of this another time. But for now, the most important thing is his profile. While not every character got an 8 section, Dr. Krygor did, and it said this. I may appear young, but the truth is... <laughs> His age wasn't revealed here, but a sticker sheet that came with the game revealed that he was turning 100 that year. I'm sorry to tell you this, but you're gonna have to forget that. In Warrior Weird Gold, Dr. Krygor's Rank C character cards state that he's over 100 years old. In the series, hardly a year has passed since the events of the first game, given that Frank is still one, so his age was slightly retconned. You just gotta love it. If you think I'm lying, they did something similar with Orbulon's age. Then there's his granddaughter, Penny, who first appeared in Smooth Moves. While her age is unknown, her rank C character card in gold states that she's in middle school. If we compare this to the Japanese school system, this would place her age somewhere between 12 to 15 years old. But something bizarre about them is that despite how long they've been around, there is no information about the generation between them. To this day, the only children you can say Dr. Grigor has are his robot creations Mike and Doris. 
and Penny, despite being in six games now, not counting cameos, still has no information about her parents. This is weird considering how almost every other child in WarioWare, with the exception of Mantis and Lulu, have mentioned at least one of their parents in some form of official media. Their relationship is the same as DK and Cranky's, except for their direct descendant confusion. This is where the double meaning comes in. According to the dictionary, grand, when referring to family relationships, means denoting one generation removed in ascent or descent. It's possible that, in the Mario universe, a father can be considered a grandfather due to a generational gap in time. Starting with Dr. Krygor, we know that human babies are delivered by storks. The only problem is we don't know how or when you receive a child works. Regardless, we can estimate that he was likely in his late 80s or in his 90s when he received Penny, leaving a sizable generational gap in time. This could work both ways with Penny acknowledging Dr. Krygor as her grandfather due to the generation gap, despite the fact that father would still be correct. This same logic can apply to the Kongs. I believe that Kongs stay in their prime throughout a majority of their life, only showing signs of age as they begin to near the end. This would explain the drastic design difference between Cranky in the Game Boy game and Donkey Kong Country. One last grand attempt at capturing Paul Lee before retiring and passing on his name. The only downside is we don't know how long Kongs live for, and I refuse to acknowledge any BS claims that have come out since the movie, but we just might. Remember what I said earlier about the Star Children? How it would make more sense if they were all born around the same time like Kamek said? Well, wouldn't it make sense for the Seven Stars to die out around the same time? Remember, all of what I said in that section was just a theory using in-universe evidence to try and explain a situation Nintendo will never likely give a clear answer to. But for now, that's gonna wrap this up. I have a lot more to say about the ins and outs of the Mario franchise, whether it's tackling popular theories, general discussions, the power scaling, or just exploring the vast amount of alternate media the plumber and his friends have gotten over the years. If you'd like to stick around for that, then please like, comment your thoughts, and subscribe to never miss a video. But until next time, see ya.